Hello and welcome to this week's market video with Trading212 and me, David Jones. With these weekly videos, what we're going to do is take a look at what was moving markets last week, what was the big news, um, what to keep an eye out for in the days ahead. We'll look at a few different markets that could be interesting. And also, as part of this, we're going to incorporate some different trading strategies every week. And we're going to try and squash all of this into a 10 minute video. So uh, let's get started. So last week, the big news last week was the US Federal Reserve, the, the American Central Bank. So on Wednesday, they raised interest rates and they put interest rates up by 0.25%. That's the third interest rate rise that we've seen from the US in just over a year. And big events like this always make for, for something of an odd week because for the first couple of days ahead of the announcement, the market's a little bit quiet, everyone's waiting to see what happens. The announcement came out and we saw some really big moves. We saw the Dow up by 100 points, uh, the Euro was up by 100 points, so, so quite a bit of volatility in markets. And you might think, well hang on, why did markets move? Because everyone was expecting this rate rise to come through. And that's true, it really wasn't a surprise. Um, but I think maybe what markets weren't expecting um, was a, maybe a more relaxed view from the US central bank as to um, maybe further rate rises this year. We're already expecting another two rate rises this year, but there was a worry uh, from some that maybe we'd see one more than that. And I think because they didn't give any strict guidance on the change to that view that we saw, I think a bit of a bounce in the likes of stock markets such as the Dow and a bit of weakness in the US dollar, which lifted markets like the Euro and gold a little bit higher. But we'll take a look at those in a minute and what uh, to keep an eye on in the days ahead. It's a bit of a quiet week this week. Um, there's a few bits and pieces of information, but, but no, nowhere near as big as the news we've had over the last couple of weeks. So a couple of things to look out for. Tuesday morning, 9.30 UK time, is UK inflation data. Um, the UK, it's an odd one at the moment with the pound because so much of the pound's movements are being driven by what's going on politically, rather than the economics. You know, it's all about Article 50 and Brexit and all that stuff. But this inflation data, we could see some moves. I think the market is expecting inflation in the UK to be around about 2.1%. And then really we've got to sort of jump to Friday to see the next big announcement. So Friday afternoon, we're due to hear from the US. We're, we're hearing what's known as the, the PMI manufacturing data. So it's the Purchasing Managers Index. And it's a way of giving us a bit of insight as to how healthy or otherwise is the US manufacturing sector. So there's a couple of things uh, to keep an eye on, but I think we should see somewhat more normal markets this week because we don't have this big event in the middle of the week that everyone's uh, waiting for. But let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look, first of all, at maybe um, a, a strategy we can use to try and take advantage of moves in markets. What we're going to look at is the idea of markets trending. Now, I'm sure this is something you've heard time and time again. Um, that markets trend, the trend is your friend, you should trade with the trend, all that stuff. So what we'll do, let's take a look at the theory of it and have a look at some markets to keep an eye on uh, in the days ahead to see if we can jump on board those trends. Let's just recap this idea of trends. Now, if you see them in a textbook, you'll often see them drawn like this. So the market uh, starts to move higher, moves a little bit higher still, sells off, moves a bit higher, and so we go on. And they all look nice and perfectly symmetrical. And typically, people will draw trend lines under these markets. And the, the approach is, it's a pretty simple one. Um, it, it's maybe a little bit harder in the real world than it is when we're looking at textbooks. But the assumption is, if the market starts uh, selling off after a bit of a rise, it's nothing to get worried about, um, assuming that trend line's gonna hold. So traders will see moves back to the trend line as a buying opportunity in an uptrend. So a market just moves higher and we expect that sort of thing to happen. But if we project this a little bit into the future, it's when we see a market do this and it breaks below the trend line. So some traders would see that as a suggestion or a warning, maybe the trend is gonna change and it's time if we bought it to think about taking profits and maybe even uh, to weigh up whether going short and trying to profit from the market falling. Of course, if we um, flip that on its head and if we draw a downtrend, and we've seen a few examples of this 
in the last week, and we're going to have a look at this in a sec when we look at real markets. Well, we have a market that's trending lower, and for some reason, sentiment changes, maybe the news changes. We had that US uh, interest rate announcement this week. Um, that, that did break a couple of downtrends. We'll have a look at that. But when this sort of thing happens, it can be a suggestion that maybe it's time to buy. Now, of course, this is an idealized view, and it's very easy to see these sort of things in hindsight and think, yes, I definitely should have bought there. But let's take a look at some real markets from the last week, what they were doing, and maybe which way the trends could be this week. So let's start off by just looking at what markets were doing last week. I thought it'd be interesting to see how the Dow reacted, the US stock market index, when this interest rate decision came out. So we're looking at this red candle here. So this was um, between 10 to 6 and 6 o'clock UK time last Wednesday. And you can see the impact that announcement had. The Dow was trading around about the 20,865 mark. The announcement comes out from the Fed. The interest rate was raised, as expected, um, but there was relief that there weren't going to be much more interest rates this year than the market was, was banking on. So we saw quite a strong rally into the close by the Dow. You know, it put on something like 100 points by the end of the session. But interestingly, and I think this will be, could be uh, a market keeping, worth keeping an eye on this week, as the week went on, much of those gains have been given up. So we did see the market push a little bit higher, but now what we're looking at here is uh, the next day, so just under 24 hours later the next day, and the market has come back, the Dow has come back to almost where it was before that interest rate decision came out. And we just had sort of a fairly inconclusive few days towards the end of the week where the market just chopped around. So what we're looking at now, I've zoomed the view out, so we're having a look over um, the last week and a half. And I think going into this week, you can see maybe how that initial excitement faded away from that interest rate decision, but we have seen the sort of 20,880 level be something of a floor for the Dow Jones, stopping any weakness. So I think for the short-term traders, that could be well a level of support to keep an eye on uh, as the week goes on. When it comes to trends, I think this is a really interesting market um, from last week. And this is, this is the price of gold. Now gold, of course, gold is priced in, in US dollars typically. So when we see US dollar weakness, the price of gold goes up. And you can see that, again, this is that interest rate decision uh, from last week. So it was uh, seen as negative for the US dollar, so the price of gold rose. Going back to what we were talking about when it comes to trends, I think we'd seen an interesting move in the days before the interest rate announcement when it comes to the trend in gold. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to choose trend line from the right hand side menu here. So if I click on here, I'm picking trend line. And I think it's pretty clear up to about the 10th of March which way the trend in gold was. There we go. You can see we've got a succession of lower highs and lower lows as the price of gold fell back from around about $1,265 to, to below the $1,200 mark. But from about the 10th of March through to the 14th of March, 15th of March, we saw some stability coming into the price of gold. And it was that interest rate decision that really put a rocket under the price. But we'd already seen the trend maybe start to change. So again, I think another interesting market to watch this week is gold. Can it build on the reversal that it started last week? Will we see the price of gold go higher? But again, I think many traders now will be thinking if we do see it drop back down again, because we did see so much buying over the last week, maybe weakness back towards that 1200 level starts to look like a buying opportunity. But I think looking at this chart here, we have seen quite a significant shift in sentiment towards gold in uh, the past sort of 10 days or so. The last market we'll take a look at is euro dollar. Now, if, if foreign exchange is new to you, euro dollar you know, tends to be the most widely traded and most popular currency pair. And clearly it's used as a barometer for the European economy versus the US economy. It's been something of a strange year um, for euro dollar. So this chart, we've got it going back to the middle of December. And you're seeing, well, the euro has gained ground 
and it gave up a lot of that ground during Feb, and now it's bounced back and recovered. There's, there's a real, I mean, clearly we've got a change of president in the US. Um, there's the threat of Brexit uh, hanging over the European economy. Maybe other European countries, you know, maybe looking to change their relationships. So it's a little bit uneasy. But what we do have, going back, of course, to this subjects of trends, we do have something, you know, of a trend in the last couple of weeks for euro dollar. And I think this is going to be another one to keep an eye on this week. It's maybe not as clear cut as some of the trends that we've got in the likes of gold, but we've seen a market that has been moving steadily higher. But I think the interesting thing to watch on euro dollar, at the end of January, we'd had quite the run up from the late December lows and the market pushed up um, sort of briefly up to the sort of one, 108 to the 20 levels up, up at these sort of highs. Let's, let's put a line on that to mark in those highs. So I'm going to choose horizontal line from the menu on the right hand side. We'll click on here. So what I want to do is put that line up there. There we go. Right about 108.35 was the high uh, from end of Jan, early Feb. We're only 100 points or so below that level. So I think the test for euro dollar this week is yes, that trend is still up. But how is it going to perform if we get back up to here? This is really where sentiment ran out of steam um, around about six weeks ago. Will we see the market do the same thing again? So for now, that trend is definitely up, but a bit of a challenge if we push back up to these old late January highs. So there's plenty there, I think, a few different markets to keep an eye on. Gold, US stock markets after the surge and uh, maybe a fall back to reality after interest rates, and also euro dollar. We've got this trend in place, but we do have those previous highs to keep an eye on. That's it from me, David Jones and Trading212 for this week. We'll be back again next week with our look ahead uh, as to what to keep an eye on uh, when it comes to the markets. Uh, if you have any topics you'd like to see us cover, make sure you just leave some comments uh, down there below and we'll uh, put them on the list and get round to them for a future video. But I hope you found this useful and see you again this time next week.